Hello you guys, this is John from Lakeshore V Center. We're going to give you some basic information on this 292S. This is the power tuck action in front of it. To operate this, you have to turn this on. Push the button at the top to retract it. Push the button at the bottom to extend it. That shuts, it off. That shuts the light off. The operation of the propane tank bottle. Turn this open. That allows the gas to go in the lines. There's an automatic change over here valve. Whichever direction this valve is selected is the direction that the propane is flowing. When it is an automatic valve, when one tank is emptied, it will automatically switch to the other. This is a Series 24 battery at a 5 amp draw that offers approximately 11.2 hours of run time. Underneath here, we have our solar This is a simple plug and play connection. These are your reset breakers, just so you know if something's not operating. Inside of the camper, 12 volt, never a bad idea to check the reset breaker or the 10 amp fuse on the front of there. Okay, pass through storage. This is your crank handle. This will operate your jacks. In a, if your jacks are not working, the power function of your jacks is not working. This is your city water and fresh water tank fill. This uh, city water connection here, you have to hook up to a hose that will bypass the pump system and will allow you to operate the faucets or the shower on the inside. The fresh water fill which is here, the cap simply unscrews, you insert your hose when the tank is filled. Slide, these are just your little marker lights here. Okay, this is your exterior shower here, hot water shower, which is nice. It operates off the pump system. If the pump is not on, the shower will not operate, okay? Or you can have it hooked up to city water and you can get water that way. Underneath here, um, we've got your gray and black water tank hook hook hookups. The larger three inch valve is for your black water tank and the smaller inch and a half is for your gray. You pull those valves out to empty the tank, make sure they're pushed in to keep the tank closed. And uh, don't take off the cap until you make sure that the uh, tank valves are actually pushed in the in position. You've got power jacks in all four corners of this. There is a manual backup system for that as well. This is a back entry door so you can access the bumps, uh, the bunks in back. This is your spare tire. This is your outside camp kitchen here. We're going to open this up for a quick, quick second so you can see this. You've got magnetic catches on this. You've got your refrigerator right there. You have a gas stove, which you've got to release this catch for. You have this slide out. There is a quick connect gas line, which hooks up underneath the camper. There it is right there in the yellow. It's a quick snapping connection. That will allow you to hook up your stove to operate that. Your faucet here has a little quick connector which will operate, that's just spring loaded and will snap in place there. To keep this out in the lock position, you wanna take these catches right here and you wanna lock those in place, okay? This is your fresh trough water tank flush. This is designed to flush your fresh water tank, excuse me, your sewage tank, I apologize. Your sewage tank, rinse your sewage tank out so if there's any solid uh, waste in there, it will help to expel or get rid of that. This is your refrigerator. There is oftentimes a condensation tube which is stuck out on the outside of this. If you have condensation which is dripping, don't worry, there's nothing wrong with that. Just some exterior outlets. Common question we get asked a lot of times, these protect, plugs are ground fault protected. If they're not operational, look for the ground fault reset inside the camper, typically located in the kitchen or bath. Your hot water heater connection here. This is a six gallon fast recovery gas electric hot water heater. It is operated from the inside of the camper. There isn't anything you should have to touch or operate here from the outside, okay? We're gonna walk inside here right now. Okay, a lot of your lights are push button lights. They're operated in the center. There's a handful of switches here by the door. We're gonna kind of go through and explain what these switches are. These switches here, this, these operate your battery condition. These will light up, tell you your battery condition. If you have water in your tanks, you notice they're empty, that's a good thing. This is to extend or retract your awning.
okay? This next uh, button here is to turn on your water pump. This next one is for your hot water heater. This is the electric side of the hot water heater. This next one after here ignites your gas on your hot water heater. You have to make sure you're plugged in to operate the hot water heater. Typically requires about 11.2 volts to ignite. This is an exterior porch light, and this is to operate your slide room coming in and out, okay? Ceiling lights, overhead switch light for this. These are for those ceiling lights, all right? Your TV, of course, has a remote, operates like a typical TV would. Your stereo system has USB hookups for you there to HDMI cables. Here's your remote. Notice there's a nine volt battery. They don't put in the battery for the smoke detector initially. They allow you to install it so it doesn't drain down right away. It inserts right in there, just snaps into place the way a conventional one would. This is a dimmer button for the lights. You can kick the lights on and off with that. You have LED lighting underneath your uh, dinette cushions and stuff like that. Stove's real simple to operate, you guys. Really straightforward. This is the igniter for the stove. When you want to turn the stove on, you turn it to the flame. Notice we got a nice flame there. Really that simple. Off position. Oven control is located over here. If we want to illuminate the stove with the blue LED lights, all we have to do is push that button to do that. Keep in mind that does draw 12 volt power, just like your under cabinet lights. A good way as an indicator to know that you're hooked up to shore power is your microwave requires shore power. If your clock is not illuminated, that means you do not have shore power. Two little controls here on the exhaust fan, a simple light, a simple hood fan exhaust. This is your refrigerator. These are lockable, so you have to pull the handle to the side. This is a gas electric refrigerator. What happens is you turn it on, you, you put, put it into auto position. If the gas is turned on, it will operate off the gas most efficiently. If your gas is not turned on, it will switch, in, switch over to electricity as long as you're pushed in. Once again, this is a gas electric model, not simply just a gas model. And that shuts it off. Your thermostat's real straightforward here to operate your thermostat. You just kick it in the mode. That's auto for fan. This allows you to adjust the fan up and down. That is the air conditioning by the little snowflake. That is the heat control. Once again, this just allows you to adjust the temperature up and down. To shut the furnace off, you push this button. If for some reason your furnace won't ignite, make sure you've checked your gas. Make sure your gas bottles are open. It is electronic ignition. Once again, requires approximately 11 um, 0.2 amps or volts, excuse me, to ignite. So you have to make sure that the battery is charged up. This is your carbon monoxide detector down here on the floor. If that starts going off, you want to make sure you open up all windows and stuff like that and step outside the unit. Also double check your battery condition because sometimes that will happen under a low voltage situation. This is that ground fault plug I was talking about. Notice a little push button reset in there. If you push that, if that's popped out, you're your uh, 110 outlets are not operating. Sometimes in your kitchen on the outside, push that to reset that, and that will operate that, okay? Switch, controlled lights. Once again, on-demand pump. You have to make sure you have your pump on or you're hooked up to city water, and then it operates just like a conventional faucet. Your toilet is a foot flush. All you have to do to operate that is simply depress the foot flush. It will open up and water will go around the bowl and flush all the waste down. 292 is a four bunk unit. These are your cable hookups and USB hookups right up there. There's a backer in the wall there so you can easily mount a TV if you'd like. And you guys, this is just some basic information for you on the 292 Passport BHS. If you'd like some additional information or have additional questions, please don't hesitate to contact Kyle at the store. He can be reached at 231-788-2040. Thank you and have a great day.